Hey everybody, welcome back to another episode of Daigle's Woodshop. I'm Ryan, this is my shop dog Lila, and today we're going to be building this Swiss Army knife of dog crates. So <clears throat> it's a dog crate, it's storage, it's a shoe rack, it's a buffet, it's really whatever you want it to be. Um, she did have just a metal crate that sat over in the corner. My wife hated it. Our anniversary was coming up, so I decided to kill about six birds with one stone and build this. So stick around, let's see how I made it. So this is what this area of the kitchen used to look like. It was just a small table and benches and a very small shoe rack that realistically only held about three pairs of shoes. I started off in SketchUp to get a design so that the boss lady would approve it and then I could get to work. If you're going to climb on your bench to break down plywood, make sure you have an obstacle on your way like this pole so that you constantly have to get up and down and really get your blood flowing. I think it's healthier that way. Now, I hear a lot of people complain about pocket holes, but they were good enough for this application and I made sure to space them out close enough where I'm not worried about this thing coming apart. Now, if I were to do this again, I would use actual joinery methods such as dados or rabbits because you'll see in a minute that I struggle pretty heavily trying to get this thing together with me just being a one-man shop and I think having the groove of a rabbit or a dado would help me to get everything aligned much easier. This is where I hopped on the struggle bus and hit every pothole in the way to getting this thing glued up. Now, there might be some people out there that are watching this and saying, well, he's stupid, he should have done it this way, or he should have done it that way, or the pocket hole should have been on the other board. And you know what? You could be 100% right. And if you've got a better way to do something like this, then let me know. I'd love to improve how I do things. And I'm not scared of criticism. Kept a couple squares handy to keep things, well, square. And once I got the dividers in to divide, I started laying out, cutting, adding pocket holes, and installing the shoe rack. Moving on to the drawer slides, these are what the drawer slides are actually going to be attached to. So I'm going to go ahead and draw a center line down the middle of all of these so that all I have to do is install them and then line up the actual drawer slide with that center line and just drive home a few screws. Here's where that center line comes in handy. All I have to do is hold up the drawer slide, use an awl to make a mark, and then I can drive home the screws. Here's 
Here I've got some reclaimed pine siding that I'm gonna use for the top, the drawer fronts, and the face frame. So we'll get that cut down to size, cleaned up, and then we'll start putting the face frame together. Now that I've got some usable lumber, I'll take some measurements and I'll start breaking down these pieces and then I'll break out the almighty pocket hole jig and we'll start assembly on the face frame. Now just as a side note, you're going to see me put together uh, just one of the side face frames and then apparently I lost footage of doing the whole front face frame, but the process was to just put the the full face frame up and take referential measurements off of where the drawers would be rather than just going for my drawing because my SketchUp drawing was just a little bit off. I designed this as kind of a shaker style piece. So here I'm just gonna take out the inside pocket hole screws and then take a rabbiting bit and cut a rabbit on the back side of this side panel. And then I will cut a piece of quarter inch plywood to fill that space. I know that's not really how the shakers would have made it. I kind of cheated and I'm okay with that. This is the side panel for the crate. Here I'm just using a pair of dividers to make sure that the slats are spaced out evenly. Then after marking the width of each slat, I'll come back with a trim router and cut a mortise for them to sit in. Now the door to the crate was made the exact same way, so if you want to see me build the door, just rewind this video about 10 seconds and you'll see how it was done. The next few minutes are just a montage of me painting and putting the face frame on the cabinet. So I'll shut up for a little bit and just let you watch me work.
Okay, let's get this top glued up. Now I had to be kind of strategic here in picking out the boards because, like I said, this is just old pine siding and there was a lot of <laughs> bee holes. <laughs> yeah, can't say that without laughing. Uh, from the carpenter bees. And when I was taking this siding off, I'm not kidding you. When I would go to pry a board, the whole shed would vibrate. There were so many bees. Just wanted to take a second here to see if you can hear how many bees. <laughs> that one almost got me. How many bees are in this thing, so. Now that the glue's dry, clamps are off, we're gonna take this over to my 52 inch wide belt sander. I'm just kidding, I wish I had one of those. Instead, we're gonna use the pencil trick. So if you've never seen this, it's just striking a bunch of lines across the surface and then coming back with a sander and just sanding until the lines are gone. This helps keep the surface nice and even and you don't sand one spot too much. Started off at 40 grit and worked my way through 220 putting new pencil lines down between each grid. So this is the drawer front for the large drawer in the middle of the cabinet and I had to come back through with some epoxy to fill some of the <laughs> some of the bee holes again. Uh, that's still funny. Uh, so I just took some crystal clear epoxy and Put a few squirts of black spray paint in it and it actually came out really well I haven't used epoxy all that much so I was pretty happy with the results that I got I just kept filling and filling and filling till I couldn't fill no more and I let it dry for about two days before I came back and sanded it down okay welcome to the gun show apparently uh, let's get some stain on this. I used the red mahogany stain from Minwax and I used a pre-stain conditioner beforehand and it came out really nice, really even. I used this stain on both the top and the drawer fronts. Here I'm just adding some supports for that large drawer front just to keep it from bowing or warping and then I'll start cutting out the holes for the dog food bowls this bottom drawer is just big enough to hold both bowls one for food and one for water and then I'll give that a couple coats of paint oh boy are we close now I got a couple coats of polyurethane on the drawer fronts the top and the door of the dog crate I added some figure eight clips to fasten the top down so all that's left to do is to screw in just a couple of screws and then we can put this thing in the house and see how my dog likes it. Thanks for sticking around to the end. Uh, I really appreciate that. If you like this video, drop me a like. And as always, y'all have a good one.
Oh, too fat for this.